Okay, let's talk about combination reactions. So a combination reaction or a synthesis reaction is when you take two or more substances and combine them and it forms only one compound. Okay, um, so let's simplify this a little bit. Um, to just think about a couple possible types of combination reactions or types of substances that would undergo combination reactions. So first off, kind of the simplest type that you definitely should be able to predict products of are when you have metals and nonmetals react and what they're going to form is an ionic compound, okay? Um, so I've got a couple examples here if you were to say take potassium and react it with nitrogen, so solid potassium, nitrogen gas, if you put those together and get them to react, what you're going to get formed is potassium nitride, okay? And so it forms the ionic compound from the ions formed by those elements, okay? Um, or if you have, say, barium solid react with chlorine gas, so you've got a metal, you've got a non-metal. If they come together and form a compound, they're going to form barium chloride. And so again, that is an ionic compound formed by the ions that are formed by those elements. <clears throat> so that's probably the simplest type of combination reaction that you can have. And that's the type that it would be assumed that you can at least predict the products of that type of combination reaction. Now, another basic type of combination reaction that you can have <clears throat> is when you have a nonmetal react with another nonmetal. And that, since it's nonmetals, will form a covalent compound. Okay, so I've got a couple examples here. Say if we had nitrogen gas react with hydrogen gas, then we would get ammonia gas, and so NH3. Um, if you had hydrogen gas react with oxygen gas, you would form um, H2O. Whether it is in the gas phase or the liquid phase depends on the conditions. Um, and so I, I have it here listed as a gas and other places you may see it listed as a liquid. Um, again, that just depends on the actual conditions that this would be occurring at. Um, but basically you're going to form a covalent compound. Now what covalent compound forms by those elements just depends on what is the most favorable, what's the most stable. Um, so sometimes you can have multiple possible reactions actually occur with nonmetals because there could be multiple compounds formed between those. So like nitrogen and hydrogen, ammonia is one possibility. You could also say form dinitrogen tetrahydride, so N2H4 is another possible compound that forms between nitrogen and hydrogen. Um, or for hydrogen and oxygen, you could also form, say, hydrogen peroxide, so H2O2. Uh, so those are harder to predict what's actually going to happen because you would have to understand something about the energetics of those reactions. And so it's always going to form kind of what's more energetically favorable or in order to form the less favorable, you would have to force it in some way. So you maybe you would have to have a specialized catalyst or something to get it to happen a different way. Um, so like I said, the most, the most basic type of combination reaction is going to involve a metal reacting with a non-metal, forming an ionic compound. And that you should always be able to predict what's gonna happen because you should know what charges um, the different atoms will form when they form an ion, and then you combine them in a ratio to make it neutral, okay? Whereas the non-metal part, that's a little trickier. And sometimes you have multiple possible reactions. Um, now, it can be more complicated than that. So it's not necessarily true that a combination reaction has to involve one element reacting with another element. It could be an element reacting with a compound or two compounds reacting um, and just that stuff forming even larger compounds, okay? Um, so they can get more complicated. And the more complicated they get, you know, when you're reacting compounds with elements and combining it all into one thing, 
it can be tricky to figure out what the actual product is unless if you you know are told or you already know that this is the only thing these things can form um, and so it can get more complicated but we we will focus on the basic metal non-metal interactions um, because that's very predictable uh, now there is this table that you could use as a resource and i'm sure there's more out there that you could use to understand a little better combination reactions um, but this table just summarizes some general um, types of combination reactions and so it lists first what i said is the most common metals reacting with non-metals to form ionic compounds and then it gives the second type that i give you the non-metals reacting with other non-metals to form molecular compounds um, but then it gives you a couple examples of when you have a compound and an element react and, uh, com and two different compounds reacting to form a new one. Um, but those, it's, it doesn't give you any further direction because, like I said, it's, it's a little trickier to determine exactly what is going to form because sometimes there might be multiple feasible outcomes, okay? So focus mainly on the first one, at least to get started understanding combination reactions. So let's do a couple just predicting the products of different combination reactions. And like I said, we'll focus on metals reacting with non-metals. Okay. Um, and these are combination reactions. So we're starting with two substances. You could start with more, you know, but we will stick to metal react with non-metal, so two things. Um, and we can predict the product is going to be some ionic compound. And that's going to be based on the ions formed by those elements. So to predict the product, it's going to be helpful to first think about the ions. And so that's what I'm going to do first. So if I have lithium, if I think about what ion it forms, well, lithium is a group one, so it forms Li+. Plus. And then bromine is a halogen, so the ion it forms is Br minus. Now be careful, the Br in this reaction is Br2, and that's because when bromine is by itself and neutral, so when it's not an ion, it's diatomic, okay? But all of these things, when they become ions, they're not going to be diatomic or polyatomic, just going to be the individual ion with a charge. And so now that I know those are the two ions it would form, then I just have to think about what ratio they combine in. Well, it's a plus one and minus one, so they're going to combine in a one-to-one -one ratio. So it's going to be just LiBr, okay? And that's an ionic compound, and so it's just a solid, okay? Ionic compounds are always solids, unless if you had them at an extremely high temperature, okay? Um, and so you should just assume that they're solids, unless if, of course, there was some water present. But in these reactions, there's no water. Um, okay, the next one, or I guess that first one, um, if you want to finish the reaction, if you want to balance it, you'd have to put a 2 in front of the lithium bromide and a 2 in front of the lithium. Okay. Um, okay. This next one, we've got barium, and barium is a group two, so the ion that it forms is Ba2 plus. And then nitrogen, well, that is three away from the noble gases, so it forms a three minus. So if you combine those in a ratio to make it neutral, you would need two of the barium ion, or sorry, three of the barium ion and two of the nitride ion. So I would have Ba3 and two, as the ionic compound that's formed, which would be a solid. And then we could balance the reaction. You would need three of the bariums. Okay. And then this last one, we've got aluminum and oxygen. Aluminum, when it forms an ion, is going to be Al3 plus, and oxygen is going to be O2 minus. So we're going to need two of the aluminums and three of the oxygens to make it neutral which every ionic compound needs to be when you write the formula, and then it would be a sum. And then we can balance that reaction. We're going to need three of the O2s, two of the Al2O3s, and four of the aluminums. Okay, so 
as you see me do, I went through and first always thought about the ions that the elements formed and then combined them in the ratio that makes it neutral. Okay, you don't have to do that. You can kind of do that in your head, um, but that is always what's going to determine the products of the reaction between a metal and nonmetal is what ions get formed. That's going to determine the ratio then of those elements in the final compound. 